my sin Gave me peace and joy within My hope is anchored in His blood His precious blood Only one thing will matter When my time shall come to die The treasures of this world won't mean a thing Oh, but the joy of knowing Jesus Will vanish all my fears For He took away Sin. He gave me peace and joy within. My hope is anchored in His blood, His precious blood. You know, we've been talking about all during Sunday school, all the things that Jesus done for us. Boy, it just touched my heart, Brother Phil. That was so good. You know, we love each other, and I, I just love Him. I love Jesus. But you know why I love Him? It's because He first loved me. Because He gave His blood. Right here's what we're singing about. That's the reason we love Him. And I just want to give Him the praise this morning for what He's done. What He suffered on the cross just for me. He took my place. He took my sins. He, he took my place on the cross. You know, I should be there. But I just want to thank the Lord for saving me this morning. That's the only thing that's going to matter here. Only one thing will matter when my time shall come to die. The treasures of this world won't mean a thing. Oh, but the joy of knowing Jesus will vanish all my fears. For he took away this And gave me peace and joy within My hope is anchored in His blood, His precious blood Amen. Yes, sir Well, bless His name, He's so good That's right I want you to know He's worthy of our praise Bible said Jesus Christ made of the wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. But according to it is written, he that glorieth, then do what? Glory in the Lord. Amen. Glory in the Lord. We owe it all to him. Yes, sir. All blessings come from God. Well, turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians today, and we'll read a few verses here. I'll read to other different places. Follow it with me. <clears throat> You can probably keep up. Well, the first verse I'm going to read is in the chapter, chapter 1. Corinthians chapter 1. First Corinthians chapter 1. I believe I'll read verse number 11. For it has been declared to me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Cleo, the third contentions among you, now this I say that every one of you saith, I'm a Paul, I'm a Paulus, and I'm Cephas, and I'm Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? 
or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Chapter 3 and verse 5. Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but men is by whom you believe? Even the Lord gave to every man. I planned to Paul's water, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watered, but God that giveth the increase. Now in chapter 12, I want to read a little bit more. Verse number 12, chapter 12, verse 12. We're all in the same book here. For as the body is one, have many members, and all members of that one body, being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized in the one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, having all made a drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. I'm just going to read one more verse. Verse 18. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. Right. Amen. <laughs> now, in this chapter, this last chapter, right out of chapter 12, just the last half of this chapter uh, mentions the word member about 12 or 14 times in the last half of the chapter. Well, with that in mind, I ought to preach a little while today, if the Lord will help me, on what kind of member are you? Now, I'm going to preach about the local assembly. In fact, uh, that's what this was written to. The Bible said in chapter 1 unto uh, the church at Corinth, local assembly. I'm preaching to the church at Canaan land today. What kind of member are you? Sometimes we preach about where Jesus uh, uh, said this, upon this rock I'll build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I'm proud I'm a member of that church. Yes, yes, sir. But today I'm talking about the local church, the local assembly. God has set every member in the body as it has pleased him. Yep, yep. Right. Now, church here in Corinth, and Phil talked about the Philippian church, a wonderful place and church, but it wasn't so as much over in the book of in Corinth and the, uh, that church. There are a lot of problems in that church. And I'll just say a few words and get started here and I'll settle down and preach on what I'm going to preach on. There are a lot of problems. And there are a problem of growth in the church of Corinth. For Paul said, I fed you with milk, not with me. For said you're not able to bear. Neither yet now you. He said, uh, you haven't changed and you're still on the milk. Right. And so they had a problem that hadn't grown up. They had a problem of division in this church here. I read to you today. Some said, I'm a Paul, I'm a Paulus, I'm a Stephen, I'm a Christ. You say, what does that mean? Some of them say, I'm going to follow Paul, I like Paul. Others said, Apollos, he's a very good speaker, and I'm going to follow Paul. Some said, I like Cephas. He, he really tells it like it is. And uh, here come that independent by and said, uh, I don't even need a preacher. I'm just going to follow Christ. That's what it said over there. I just read it to you a minute ago. And uh, so they're so divided. And then they had a problem of fornication in this church in chapter 5. I mean fornication in the church. And they had a problem with the tongues in chapter 14. And they was mixed up and confused about the tongue book. They even had a problem with the resurrection in chapter 15. Some of them was confused and, and didn't know about the resurrection of the saints and things on that line. So with this in mind, they did have a lot of problems. And, uh, but in chapter 1, the Lord uh, said, wrote to them and called them saints. 
They did have some good ones in that church. He called them saints. Well, that's the way it is today. Got all kinds, and that's what I want to preach about. What kind of member are you? Now, because, I don't know how to say that, but the, where they're not reading the Bible, they're reading our life. It's very important how we live every day before this old world. In fact, Paul said, uh, I think that Christ has set the apostles first of all as a spectacle to the world yep. and to angels and to me. Amen. You want a spectacle? The old timers say, let me borrow your spectacles. You can see good. And borrow their glasses to look through. That's glasses, something you see through. Right. And so he said, the, the Lord set us out there spectacles of this old world and to angels and to me. Yep. He said the world's looking on, the angels are looking on, men's looking on, and well, be careful how we live. Right, right, right. You're right. Let your light therefore so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The Bible said you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation of peculiar people. The Bible said that you may be blameless and harmless for sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. Listen, among whom you shine as lights in the world. I tell you, people sizes this church up by the way we live. How you conduct yourself. How I conduct myself. It's so important we be right wherever we're at. Amen. Amen. That my own to preach about what kind of member you some members are like a wheel by. They have to be pushed everywhere they go. Can't do a thing in the world, they don't do nothing on their own. Now wheel bar's a good thing. It'll haul your weight and do pretty good, and, but it won't move off his tracks unless somebody comes by and gives us a push. You're right. You're right. You're right. That's the way some church member. I mean, they all do nothing on their own. They have to be pushed around everywhere they go. Right. Oh, God help us today. Paul said you didn't run well. Who did hinder you that you would not obey the truth? Somebody's hindered somebody along the way. You know that's right. But I'll say one thing. We need to have a little life about us. Amen. And ye hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Right. I'm proud I'm not dead anymore. I've got a little life about me. And I'd love to have more than I got now, but I'll tell you, I, I'm proud I've got a little bit of life about me. Amen. The Bible says, the spirit that raised Christ from dead dwell in you. He that raised Christ from dead shall also do what? Quicken your mortal body by spirit that dwells on the inside. Amen. That knowing the time and now it's high time to wake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The Bible says as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Right. Right. Amen. And we ought to grow up now. I, I know if you're a young Christian, I'm not fussing you out, but I ought to say if you've been the way for 20 years or 30 years, you ought not to wait for somebody to come by and get you by the hand, come and say, come on, let's do something for God. You ought to pick up with yourself and, right. and you ought to do it yourself without somebody helping you out with it. Amen. amen. Yeah, give me a good amen right there. You know that's right. Amen. I don't say that. Something's like a wheelbarrow. I want to say, there's not a lot of difference in a wheelbarrow and a trailer. <laughs> the only thing, the trailer holds a lot more and bear a lot more weight, but it won't move either. That's got a tractor to pull it. Right, right. Yeah, Lord. Do you know the only difference in a wheelbarrow and a trailer? You have to push one up and pull the other. Yeah. So it winds up just about the same thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Amen. Telling you right. Yes, sir. I had two deacons one time. Many years, not here, of course, many years ago. I was just a young preacher, probably late 20s, and they was probably at least in their 50s or something like that. I know they've been in heaven for many years now. But I had two deacons. And one of them worked at the fire department. At that time, they worked 24 hours and off 24 hours. So the very best he could do was a half time. He'd come to church one weekend Wednesday night, and then he worked the other weekend Wednesday night. But the other fella, they worked close together. They reminded me of a, a tractor and a trailer. Yeah. See, that trailer wasn't work. The tractor wasn't there. So a tractor pull it along. <laughs> they kind of work like that in the church. I'm not, I'm telling you the truth. And uh, now, now there he comes to church on Sunday morning, not saying that. But if there's anything pertaining to the business of the church, or a men's meeting, or a deacon's meeting, anything, if the feller was at work, the other wouldn't show up. That's what you call a trailer and a tractor. It takes both of them, you know. <laughs> Trailer's no good, don't have somebody to pull it along. We've got some members in our churches like that, like them wheel well, I gotta go. But some is like a football. You can't ever tell which way they're gonna bounce next. Right. <laughs> amen. Tell the truth, amen. You can't ever tell. Today they're Baptists. Go on to the tell the Baptist church. Well, they don't get enough excitement. They go join the charismatic. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. The excitement gets too much over there. Come Go on. join the Methodists. Quiet down a little bit. Come on. Next time you see them, you know what they've done? They decided to go join one of these big churches where there's a lot of activities. Had yeah. to have that activity. Yeah. So you just simply don't know which way they're going to bounce next, amen. Right, right. Hey. Think I've said this before. I believe you ought to be a pig or a possum one. <laughs> yeah. believe you ought to be what you are every day, wherever you go. You ought to know what you believe, why you believe yes, it. You ought to know wh yes, where you attend church and why you attend church there yes, and what the church stands for, what the preacher stands for. And you ought to settle down us a little bit. You ought not be like a football bat. Bouncing around yeah, which way. Amen. 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 Lord God, have mercy on all of them. Yeah. Something like that football, you can't ever tell which way they're going to bounce now. I try. Paul says, Stand fast. Stand fast, therefore, the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That you henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. Oh, God help us right. to anchor right. down, to anchor down in the Bible, the Word of God. And That's right. Be like an old football, huh? I'll tell you. The Bible says, wherefore taking you the whole arm. The whole arm. We don't need part of the arm. We need the whole arm of God on. We need to put it all on. That's right. Amen. Be steadfast. Hold me the always abound the work of the Lord. Amen. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. I don't know a lot of things. There are a few things I know. I know I'm saved and called a preacher and a few things like that. But there are a few more things I know. I know my labor is not in vain in the Lord. Right. Right. Paul said that. We know that. Right. Yes. Right. Be steadfast. Thank God be out in the middle of the world. Don't let this old world shake you around. Know what you are, where you are, what you believe, where you've been, and where you're going. Amen. amen. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. So something like that old football. I'll say something else. We've got some like balloon. Full of wind. And sometimes they blow up. Amen. Hey, but this this part. Them balloons is exciting though, you know. See them balloons, you're so excited about it. You can go down the road something and uh, see a bunch of balloons tied on a mailbox or something, you know, something's a happening, you know, you know, somebody's got a new baby. Or they're gonna have a shy. Or they're going to have a party. Somebody's having a birthday. It gets excited. 
And uh, when you see them balloons, well, a lot of members get excited just for a few minutes, you know, not, not too long, maybe a day or two. They don't stay excited very long. Lord have mercy. <laughs> well, you say there ain't nobody like that. I wish you was right, but you're not right. The Bible said we know we all have knowledge, but knowledge pass up. Amen. Right. Amen, preacher. Yeah. That's the reason I know about everybody I have a pastor had a little knowledge. <laughs> Some got more than other. But knowledge puffs up. Oh my. Sometimes them the balloons blows up too. Right, right. Oh God help us. But I wanna say this. If we got that chart in our life like it ought to be, it won't be no puffed up. The Bible said charity puffeth not up. Right, you're right. Right? That's right? what the Bible said. Bible said the wisdom from above is first pure, peaceable, gentle, easy being treated, full of good fruit without partiality and without hypocrisy. That's the kind of wisdom we need today from above. Amen. 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 You're right. We all time blowing up. In fact, the Bible said, uh, great peace have they that love thy law and said nothing shall offend them. Amen. Nothing Amen. shall offend them. Amen. Well, better go on. I don't get all this preach for them. Get on down there. Then some slack kites. Y'all keep a tight string on them. Kind of blow away if you don't keep a tight string on them. Yes, sir. People wonder why the preacher preaches like he does. I tell you sometimes, you have to preach that way. If you preach it so things general, they'll pitch it over the shoulders of somebody else. Don't pay Come you on. just about got to call sin, sin. That's, right. just, that's just the way it is. You got yes, to call. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so, uh, got to keep a tight string. That's the reason you have to preach. People are drill. People, people are drill. I said people are drill. Yeah. It's just in us to drill. Yeah. We don't drift toward God. We have to pray and work our way up there. Yeah. We drift away from God. Yeah. You don't have to do anything drift away. You drift away from God. That's the reason we have to preach. Yeah. Let me tell you this. It ought to be the love of Christ that constrains us to do what we do for the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Right. It ought not to really believe just because the preacher preaches, but it ought to be because the love of Christ constrains us to do it. Amen. But sometimes you have to preach against things. You have to preach against tobacco. Come on. Keep people clean, pure. Sanctified, set apart. Yes, you have to preach against that old rock music. Yep. Yep. Try to keep the demons out of people. Right. Any young folks ever got... You young got your car set on that station channel over there. You know where to play that rock music? If you have, you'll change it when you get back out to your car. I've said this before, I'm going to say it again today. You can take a good boy, girl, teenager, whatever. Don't even have to be a teenager, something younger than a teenager. And they can be a good Sunday school kid and stay in Sunday school all their life and everything good. You can turn them loose with that rock music for three or four weeks and they'll turn their nose up at mama and daddy and the church, the Bible, things of God. They'll be rebellious. It's all get out in three or four weeks. It drives you rebellious. I know what I'm talking about. I'm not guessing. I've saw it. It'll do it. It'll do it. It'll do it. So you got to stay away from that rock music. If you're going to be a Christian, it's just about the next thing impossible to be a Christian mess with that rock music. I have to preach sometimes on indecent dressing. Keep the church clean. Right. Amen. Right. Looking right. Amen. Right. right. 
I ain't got time to preach about that today. I preach about unfaithfulness. Anybody been unfaithful lately? I preach about unfaithfulness sometimes. You just got to keep a tight string about these things. And you got to preach about hunting sometimes. You say, ain't none of your business. It is too. No, it ain't none of my business hunting. I don't know about hunting. I don't hunt. But uh, it's my business to tell you. My business to preach. I'm not saying they're wrong with hunting or fishing or camping or golfing, none of these kind of things in their place. But I am telling you that sometimes people hunt too much. Amen. They fish too much. Amen. They golf too much. Yes, they camp too much. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. Oh, that's quiet, but I don't mind it. So you listen. I just want you to listen to me. I'm right. telling you the truth. Break. Let keep a tight string on them. Right. Got to preach about them, Pat. Amen. You can get a church, an old fashioned church, clean living, dress right, faithful, doing right, give them a liberal preacher for about a year, and I tell you, you wouldn't ought to know that church when you went back. Amen. You got to preach about these things. I mean, every once in a while, you got to preach like everybody's backslid and quit. Yeah. Preach like everybody's quit. You say you do well. I every once in a while I do. I don't mind it. <laughs> Peter said, "I think it me as long as I'm in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance." Amen. Now, if you if you're not one of these kind of members I'm preaching about, he won't shake you up no how really. Amen. Then some members are like a little kitten. They're more contented when. They're petted. <laughs> you know, you have to rub the fur the right way. I rub the fur the right way every Sunday. Some of us need to turn the cat around. I'm rubbing the fur the right way. But some people's more contented when you pet them. I wish I had me a bottle. Oh. I, I have had some bottles and pacifiers when I preached about them today. wish I had me one. Sometimes you have to get that bottle and you put in the mouth, you know, you got to pet them a little bit. Yeah, right. You get all the milk they want, then you got to stick that pacifier in their jaw. Let them chew on that pacifier a while. <laughs> if you don't, they don't love you. And that's the precious, all that precious, we just couldn't do without them. We can't. We've got to try to make everybody happy and please everybody. <laughs> Lord. Paul said, I fed you with milk, not with meat. You wasn't able to take it. Neither yet now you have, where there's among you envy, strife, and confusion. Then you're carnal. Right. And you've not grown up to you. But I like this verse. I'm going to hurry on. Paul said, when I was a child, I thought of a child. Right. And uh, when I was a child, I thought of a child and stood a child. But when I became a man, he said, I put away them childish things. Yes. Amen. That's what we need in our churches many times Amen. today. Right. And we got one of the better churches around, at least I, think, I want to think it is and hope it is. But I tell you, in our churches today, we need to put away them childish things. Amen. Grow right. up. Be men and women for God. And them that are young and hadn't grown up yet, help them, let them look at us. Yes. And, uh, and uh, see how we do. Well, turn to the page and I'm half done. <laughs> then I'll say something's like a... Uh, Hearth coal fire. Sometimes it's cold, sometimes it's hot. Yeah. Right. We got people like that in our church. Yes, sir. Oh, things go pretty good and they're feeling good and everything. I mean, they're on the mountaintop and you uh, have a testimony or whatever. You don't have to have a testimony meeting just to, just to get silent for about a half a minute and they'll jump up and testify. They're on fire and they're running. Then a little, little problem come, a little trouble come. 
They don't feel like praising the Lord no more. They just don't have it in them no more. They, they've lost it. They, sometimes they're hot. Sometimes they're on fire for God. And uh, I'll tell you, if, we, if we're, if we're uh, feeling good or feeling bad, we ought to be a little more consistent in the work of God. Amen. 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 Paul said in their hardness has a good shoulder of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Amen. We might not feel exactly like it sometimes, but praise the Lord in here. Oh, that's right. Amen. That's right, preacher. Peter wanted to build three tabernacles on the mountain. Most people don't want to build one, but he wanted to build three. <laughs> Not only that, but he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Not only that, but when they came to arrest Jesus, he had some fight in him. He got his sword out and whacked one of the servants' ears off. And he was, he was, uh, had the fire burning down on the inside. He did. But when they came to arrest Jesus, he cut his ear off, but a little bit later, when he was having that mock trial, and they started getting him in on it, he started denying the Lord. Right. What about us? Don't you think we're kind of that way sometimes? The Lord told him he'd do it. He didn't think he would. But when, when the cock crowed twice, three times, whatever it was, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. He didn't have to say a word to him. He went out and well, better. He repented. He got right with God. Sometimes we're on fire. Sometimes we're cold and indifferent. Sometimes we're ready to pray. Oh, Lord, and we'll always be ready to pray. Well, we all need to pray. We all need to pray. I need to pray. I need to pray for you. You need prayer. You need to pray for me. I need prayer. Amen. We all, we all need it. Amen. So you ought to pray without, pray without ceasing. Sometimes we sang and whistled and we enjoyed it and we sang in the church. And then again, just uh, don't feel like it. Lost her song. Did you ever lose your song? Come on. And uh, go to church sometime. If you're guilty of this, I'm, I'm not picking at nobody. But be honest, I don't know exactly who's required then and who wasn't, but I'm just going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. If you sang the choir, if you're not sick, something wrong with you, you ought to sing every service. That's right. Amen. Wednesday night, Amen. Sunday night, and Sunday morning. Every service. And uh, we need to be consistent about this business serving the Lord. Right. And worshiping God. Amen. We need to be, we need to stay wet. And don't never don't never say nothing about the choir, not what it used to be. If you're a spectator. Yeah, that's right. right. Amen. You're right. right. Yeah, yeah. We've got a lot of spectators. They just sit and look. They yep. turn their hand, don't do nothing. I like that wheelbar song about what about. But uh I'll tell you, if uh, if we want things a little better. Let's put our shoulder to the wheel. Amen. Pitch in a little bit. Help out a little bit. Amen. And some people give all this. Give you the old saying, the shirt off the back. Sometimes, and then they get down discouraged. And they don't even put no money off on Sunday morning. Oh, I had a house payment this week. I had to spend all my money. I had to give a little. I know, preacher. I'm going to quit that right there. Yeah, but some is like a neon light. You know more neon lights, you know what they do? All the time going off and on. Yeah. Amen. Going off and on, off and on, off and on. Today they're on. Tomorrow they're off. One time they're on. One time they're off. Oh, God help us. Well, to pray every day, read our Bible every day, be faithful to the church every time we have service, we ought not be going off and on. We ought to be a real Christian for the Lord. Amen. Amen. And a real member of this church. Amen. Amen. Right. You say it won't happen to me. It's 
Happened to better people than me and you, I guess. Happened to Elijah, got the greatest victory ever got than when he sat down under a juniper tree. Right, you're right. You're absolutely right. Peter caught so many, they caught so many fish, they, you know, cutting hard good into the ship. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, a little bit later he said, you got time to work, I reckon. He said, I'm going to fish you. They said, we'll go with you. Went back to the old trade again. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, off and on, off and on. But listen to this. Acts 28. How much longer have God? Uh, we're learning pretty good, I reckon. But over in Acts chapter 28, when the great shipwreck in chapter 27, and they, you know, the ship tore all the pieces, and one could swim out, got out, and the other a piece of uh, the ship and got on, floated out. And but the barbarian people build a fire and received them. Uh, to, because it's cold and wet, and uh, they build a fire that's warm. And Paul went together on the stick, and uh, a viper flashed on him right there. They looked at him. They said, "This man's a murderer. Even though God let him get out of the uh, sea alive, he's going to die anyhow. He's a murderer. He's going to die anyhow." And they looked at him, looked at him, and after nothing happened to him for a while, they changed their mind Amen. and said it was a god. Now what I'm trying to say, all this I'm saying today about this on and off business, I tell you, we ought to be consistent. We ought to live every day. That sinners, backslider, people around us that don't go in church, don't go to church, we ought to live every day that would make somebody change their mind about God, no time religion, amen. amen. Let them know we got something real living down on the inside, something that a person church on Sunday, Sunday night, Wednesday night, walk right, talk right, spin right, do everything right. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. They changed their mind when they saw what happened to him. Then some's like empty wagons. They rattle all the time. The more empty wagons. When I was a boy, they had the steel tire wagon. Most of y'all not old enough to know about this. Maybe a handful. Besides Brother Glass, he knows he knows more about it than I do. But uh, the most steel tired wagon, that's, that's about all kind of wagon I had. There was probably run up on a rubber tired wagon with hard level, most of the time it's still tired. Wagon and rocky roads and mules pulling them wagon. And especially late in the evening, most of the time as far as that go, you could hear that old empty wagon coming down the road for a full mile, maybe two miles. You could hear it rattling, run over them rocks and the most steel tires. Rattle like one thing. But you could put a heavy load of corn or wood, whatever, just anything, a heavy load on that wagon. And about all you would hear is that wheel screaking a little bit when it turned over. Stopped all of that rattling. Amen. You know what I'm about to say, don't you? Yeah. Empty wagon rattles a whole lot. Yeah. But if we'd get our wagons filled up, if we'd get filled up on the good things of God, he'd stop a lot of that rattling and the screak a little bit when the wheels turn. Yes. Woo, hallelujah. Yes. Proud the Lord just let me think of that. I don't tell you, I don't tell you, you won't never learn nothing if you talk all the time. If anybody tells you something, you won't hear them. Right. You're talking yourself. Yeah. Oh, you know somebody does it? No. He's... Bless you. We have one confession here today. <laughs> Amen. The Bible says, shut out and be quiet to do your own business and work with your own hands. Amen. See, you thought I didn't have no scripture on what I was preaching about this. It's right in this Bible right here. This Bible right. The tongues of the little member boast this great thing. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindling. Right. And be careful about right that time. I just got two more, and it's worth you waiting to hear these last two. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I preached on some, I guess the word would be bad things. Most people call it bad things. But I got two 
I want to say something about. Thank God we need these kind. Some's like the sun, S-U-N, when it goes forth in this mouth. The Bible said, He that loved the Lord said, uh, Let him be like the sun when he goeth forth with all of his might. We need some good old sunshine Christians in our churches. And I thank Amen. God we've got a few. Amen. Got a few. Amen. And you know what the sun does? The sun drives away the darkness. It don't matter how storm it's been, how bad the weather's been, when the sun rises over there, starts coming up, it drives the darkness and storm clouds away. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yes. Sun drives the darkness back. We need some Christians like that. Yep. The sun causes growth. Yes, sir. You can plant anything, pet it, hoe it, and fertilize, do everything you want to to it. It has to have a certain amount of sunshine to get it to grow right. Amen. Causes growth. And then the sun furnishes heat. Yes, sir. 73 million miles away. Is that what they say? The sun is. But we'd freeze to death if it wasn't for the sun. That's right. And if it wasn't for the sun, a few sunshine Christians in our some of our Baptist churches you just about freeze to death. Right. My right. wife nearly freezes in hell. But she's, you know, she just can't help that. She gets cold. Talk about natural spirit. Spiritually speaking, you'd freeze to death some of our church. You're right there. Didn't have a few sunshine Christians. Yes, right. sir. Amen. You got to. Uh, let me say. The sun shines under any conditions. Yes, sir. Oh, you say some days I don't see the sunshine. Me too. But I'll tell you, when we see it shining or not, somewhere above them clouds, the sun is shining right on. Shining right on. Sun has no respect to person. Shines on the good, the bad. Shine on everybody. Wouldn't be good to have a house full like that. Yes sir. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Lord have mercy. I, I'm, I'm going to quit with this. Just one more, just a few words about this. Something's like a good watch. Get this right here. Open face, open face, pure gold, quietly busy, and full of good works. I like to have a house full like that little watch. Oh, sir. Open face. Not trying to hide nothing. Pure gold. What about quietly busy? <laughs> and full of good works. There's a lot to be done. And we need to be full of them good works. Yes, sir. I know we're saved by grace. But the Bible said we're created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God before day that we should walk in them. Right. I'll stop right there. And uh, I guess you're happy. I hope I've said something to help you. And uh, I'm going to ask for a show of hands. What kind of Christian you are, you wouldn't want to raise your hand anyway. And I wouldn't want you to. But I hope and pray that somehow or another, the Lord will tug your heart and my heart and all of our hearts to help us want to be a better Christian than we've been the past. Better member of this church yep. and do more for God than we have in the past. Amen. Dear Lord, I thank you for letting us be here today and show the blessing of fellowship in the house of God. I know that, uh, Lord, we've kind of preached a skitter today, I guess, but I feel like, Lord, you've put this on my heart, and I, I pray you use it for your glory and help us all. God, help us all. Start with me, Lord. Help all of us.
that we'll so desire in our heart to be a better member of this church, better member of the local assembly, better Christian, better husband, wife, moms and dads, children, all that, everybody. If there's one sinner here today, speak to their heart about salvation. They see the need of the Lord. They'd come get saved. Pray you'd bless us here tonight. If you let us live and come back, it'll be a good time of fellowship in the Lord's house tonight and every time we'll meet. I do thank you again for your presence and meeting with us today. Thank you for everything. Bless our sick, bless our weak, bless our discouraged. And help us all that we'll determine, we'll determine for the grace of God we're going to be faithful to your service. And we'll love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.